Welcome to Greenhorn Linux. Linux for Greenhorns. On this episode of Greenhorn Linux, Adam explains what partitioning is all about. I think we're going to see another exciting and riveting discussion. Today I'm going to go over partitioning. And if you haven't seen last week's video, File Systems, make sure you watch that as this will tie directly into last week's video. So to better understand partitioning, uh, I'm going to use the analogy of a building. So let's say your hard drive is just a building. Under normal circumstances, uh, and the way most computer manufacturers set things up, uh, your hard drive is just basically called your C drive. So the entire building has really no rooms. It's just this one big giant building. And the problem with this approach is that when something happens inside the building, like a software issue, uh, the entire building has to be regutted or formatted, and then you would have to reinstall Windows. And uh, the way most people have their computers set up is that if the uh, C drive or Windows operating system goes, then right underneath that is your data. So in order to fix the Windows operating system and reformat it and reinstall it, your data also gets wiped out. So even if you are planning on running just the Windows operating system, I still highly recommend separating out your data from the Windows operating system or the C drive. And the reason for this is if Windows crashed and you had to reformat the C drive, then since you have that partitioned out with your data, uh, you would just be reinstalling the operating system on that C drive, and then your data, which is in a separate partition, would be perfectly safe. So going back to the building analogy, um, this, instead of just having a, uh, a building with no rooms in it, just a, a big giant building, like uh, in the beginning uh, of the analogy that I said, now we're going to start placing in partitions or separate rooms. So in this analogy, you would have a bathroom, you would have a bedroom, you would have a kitchen. So if something catastrophic happened in the kitchen, uh, the bedroom and the bathroom would be safe, so all you would have to get out would just be the kitchen, and your bathroom and bedroom and all the other rooms in the building would be perfectly safe. So keeping with this analogy, uh, at this point you should realize that the building equals your hard drive. So what's nice is that if you have a software failure within the partition, then uh, everything should be protected. It's also important to note, though, if the entire building burns down or your hard drive has a catastrophic failure, your data will not be protected. Basically, everything within that building will have been destroyed. So this will be all your partitions. It'll be your data. It'll be your operating systems. It'll be everything. So. Even with this approach, I still recommend doing daily backups. Um, this approach is really, really nice for uh, if you have to reload uh, operating systems, um, because then you don't have to worry about your data quite as much. But still, it is important to do backups just in case of a catastrophic hardware failure. So if you've chosen to set up a dual boot system, the bare minimum number of partitions you must have is two, one for the Windows operating system and one for the Linux operating system. Uh, mm -hmm. Those operating systems cannot be uh, on the exact same partition. I also recommend that you would set up a third partition, uh, that would be your data partition, and depending on where you want to access, uh, see last week's video on file systems, um, it's either going to be formatted as an ext4 or it is going to be formatted as an NTFS file system. So at this point, if you're going to go with the ext4 route, um, then during the install, uh, I'll, I'll show you how to do this, we're going to mount that or make that partition your home partition. And if you're going with the NTFS uh, route for the Windows for shared between the two operating systems, then um, that will just be a, a standalone NTFS partition. And uh, later on in future videos, I can show you how that will automatically mount to a particular folder in Linux. All right, so at this point, I am going to show you the differences between Linux and Windows. So I'm just going to open up my file manager. I'm on the Linux side of things right now. This is just my default file manager. And so the way this works is this is called uh, root. And uh, I'll go into more detail about this in a future video. But everything goes underneath the root partition. So for example, even though this is on a separate partition, my home drive, it actually goes root home. So for example, when I plug in a USB stick, uh, what will happen is it will be mounted into a folder. So uh, for Ubuntu, for example, it'll be root and it'll be under the media uh, 
folder. So you can see this is my NTFS partition or my Windows partition. Uh, this is where I'm doing all my video editing. So the file structure for Linux is much different than for Windows. Everything is root and then everything falls uh, under root. So this is fantastic because you can actually mount particular uh, hard drives and stuff into folders which is great for uh, backing up and a lot of other cool applications. Now on the Windows side of things, the way that this is handled is when you plug in a USB stick, it is separate from the C drive. So every partition in Windows is not under the C drive. You actually see that physically separated out. So when I bring up a Windows Explorer, here you can see my NTFS partition. It looks like a separate drive. Uh, again, with Linux, everything is under the root, under a folder, and with uh, the Windows operating system, everything looks like a separate partition and is outside of the C drive. So if you go with the ext4 route, and uh, I'll show you again how to do that when we actually do the full-blown install, then your one your home partition will be on a separate partition, but it'll be in the home directory. And if you go with the NTFS route, um, during startup, uh, you, you should see the drive over here. Uh, I just labeled mine NTFS. And then when you click it, you'll find out that it'll actually be in the uh, root media uh, slash NTFS folder, because uh, that's how it was actually mounted. So here's a very quick look at my setup. Uh, essentially, what I have is I have two buildings or two hard drives. Um, I have uh, on this building or hard drive, I have partitioned, I have uh, the Linux operating system and I have the Windows operating system. It's basically split in half. And then on the other building or other side of things, I have uh, a few partitions. I have my NTFS partition, uh, which is approximately 50 gigs in size. That's formatted as an NTFS. Um, and that's where I do all of my uh, video editing and stuff like that. And then the rest of the partition or the rest of of the building slash hard drive uh, is basically uh, all of my data and this is formatted as an ext4 and I can only see it on the Linux side of things okay well hopefully that clears up some uh, partitioning for you and you better understand it next week I'm going to show you how to partition in the Windows side of things uh, if you want to set up everything beforehand uh, and then the following week I'm going to show you how to partition in the Linux side of things uh, if you want to partition beforehand. Uh, you also have the option of partitioning during the install. Um, I usually prefer just to prep everything beforehand just because it makes the install go much better and you already have a game plan in place of how you want to set this all up. Next week you'll hear this warning, but I'll give this warning right now. Uh, before partitioning, always back up just in case your partitions get messed up. Uh, there is always a slight risk. I've never had an issue, but it's important to always back up everything before you start partitioning. My other warning is this. A, a lot of systems these days come without a Windows Live Rescue CD or, or the Windows CD, when, especially for like laptops and such. In this scenario, usually what is set up is a special hidden partition that you as the user don't know about. But once we start partitioning, it's very, very easy that we could accidentally wipe out this one particular partition. So just keep an eye out for it. Uh, usually it's maybe like 10 gigs or whatever in size. And the way this works is it has a snap snapshot of when you first booted up Windows. Uh, so it's a nice clean snapshot of the Windows operating system. And what happens is when you initiate the recovery, it just takes this partition and dumps it back into the other partition. So basically it just goes one way and it just takes that fresh perfect install and dumps that back into your C drive, uh, thus restoring everything to factory settings. If you want to keep that partition, we'll just have to work around that partition. If we accidentally wipe out that partitioning when you're setting this all up, the downside to that is you do not have a factory install anymore. Well, hopefully you found this video helpful. Uh, again, even if you're not going to use anything with Linux, it's still a good idea to think about separating out your data versus the operating system. As always, thanks for watching, and be sure to check out my website, greenhornlinux.com. Catch you later.